Choip, choip, choip. Choip, choip, choip. Ah, oh, just look at that view. From atop this cliff, looking down at the canopy. Wait a minute, unless there's some hidden earth we're not seeing, this elephant is either an extreme sports aficionado, or may need some help with their addiction to marula fruit. Our hero is Enzo Koryodan, king of Zama, and the bearer of the Koryodan family's legacy. Quite a powerful legacy. Orionics, like himself, can tap into an element of their legacies and call upon power from their ancestors. And when they do, they represent this universe's strongest force. And when Enzo and his queen Irene get forced out of their kingdom by an invading force, they must embark on a journey to activate all four pillars of Enzo's legacy. A journey of self-discovery to activate his true potential, maybe find some allies to assist them, and finally take back the throne. Visually, I like it. The design is unique, deriving style and inspiration, I'm assuming, from different African sources. Sure, I'm guessing, but it has a location called Addis Abeba, and you have an attack called Shaka's Wrath, so maybe that's fair enough. With a fantasy touch, maybe even a stereotypically JRPG touch. Yet a lot of times they make it work. Space Age armor up top, skirt and shoes lower down, whilst holding a very workaday spear. I don't know if I'm just really up for this game, but it's not until now, two years since I really played it, as is my review cycle's custom, that I realize how weird some of these designs are. Quick, more enemies to kill. Don't even register the fact that they're wearing bird jetpacks, head-mounted ones. The civilian NPCs are a lot more tame, some of them may even be cartoony or cute even, but I'd say they're nice too. And the backgrounds are good too, all shown from the side. At first I was a bit worried. You know, a lot of nearly single-tone grass and an unpleasant disjointed feel. But as they play more of the lighting, soften things a bit, show off some lush living spaces, it improved dramatically. Plus each continent has a different architectural style. They they look lovely, quite different from one another. I hope I'm not stereotyping here, but they have a nice asymmetrical quality, which again I'd argue is a bit unique. Maybe it's just a side-on perspective, or maybe it genuinely is a more freeform layout with liberally and arguably irregularly placed decorative items, houses in the trees, wooden palisade, stone walls, with giraffes presumably on sale. Don't be intimidated, they're not that cool. Their current trend is embroidered khaki. There might be some edginess to the lines of the NPCs when you're looking from far away, and the animation can be limited. It's missing frames, can feel rigid, maybe unnatural. You'll especially see the cracks when you use special powers and during the cutscenes. You'll see some graininess, and for instance you may see noticeable stuff like a sprite being rotated instead of moving. Sometimes it looks like the powers you use were overlain, but some of the powers do look great, and the cutscenes are very shown in anime, which I like. If you do too, it should compensate therefore. By giving you a reasonably length, physics ignoring fling fest. Enzo even has to charge regularly, although the powers you use are more elemental than energy or beam like. Musically, it's unique too, quite strong. A mixture of a big orchestral sound, if the pitch of the horns is a bit different, and maybe some fantasy adventure music with some more stereotypically African instrumentation. A somber flute. A lot of different types of percussion. Plus some nice mouth noise on occasion. I'd say musically it's great. And sorry for continuing to compare this to a JRPG. I just saw one reviewer once compared to Tales and I can't get that out of my mind. But it really sounds like they even have their own take on the boisterous track that plays during sillier, light-hearted moments. Maybe a bit much, but that's because those popping sound cues In between the horns, sounded like something you would hear played after the punchline on a film intended for children by people who didn't have much respect for the intelligence of children. The only other issue it may have musically is a very small thing. This combat track is nice, but it's kind of short and it loops.
I enjoyed this game quite a lot, felt it had a nice manageable length, plus I tend to be quite patient, so this didn't bother me, but it might bother some other people. Especially since I believe this is the main track for standard battles, so you will hear it a lot. Plus, as condensing it showed us, it already has an inherently repetitive quality because some sections repeat in succession. Onto the gameplay, it's an odd duck. You gain experience, items incrementally scale up. Wait, here we literally just escaped the invasion. Why is this random merchant already selling Zama's heirlooms? And you once again have JRPG-esque random encounters, except they're optional. But combat-wise, it plays like a side-scrolling beat-em-up without much scrolling. You have a very springy character, you can dash too, use your standard attacks and then bring out one of your legacies, which offers three more attacks each. Two standard powers and an ultimate. That activates once you use the power enough. And just keep an eye on your AP, so you can actually cast the powers. If you run out of AP, the legacy will disconnect, and you use the SDM to dash and get away. Also call on Irene. You kind of activate her like a companion in Smash. She can heal you, or attack with magic, and kill a bunch of sprites, ideally when they're bunched together, so that you can carve through them. Yes, the 2D nature means you can attack multiple enemies at once or fight powerful Orionix that are tough nuts to crack and will require a bit more focus to defeat, which at times can drag on when compared to brutalizing a bundle of weaker enemies with stunlock, but on the other hand, you yourself can get caught in a damage loop. Okay, loop is rather dramatic, more like damage cascade where everything hits you, which is always frustrating, but other than that, it's a bit of methodical fun. Bolt over the enemy, deal with the ranged threats, and sometimes just keep them in the air. Maybe it feels loose, but this time in a good fun way. I opted to use each legacy until I unlock the ultimate, and in the process I got used to how the moves work spatially. Then move on to the next legacy, and you can combine them too to create even more powerful legacies, and then repeat the process for those as well. Sure they can seem like reskins to an extent, but adhere to certain animation templates, with the odd difference in reach or movement, maybe it's usable in a different position, is faster or slower, has a different power level, but it gives a bit more visuals it, simple yet pleasant. It also has very light platforming, I suppose to make it feel a bit less linear, plus it has some simple puzzles like a Simon Says stuff you've seen before, so these aren't necessarily the biggest draws, but they're not exactly unwelcome either. Gives a bit of a change of pace, and story wise the game is very good. The world building is great, with its ancestral ties, tribal affiliations, and history. And the tale tends to be quite mature, filled with death, doubt, and personal growth. Don't worry, one of the presumably more senior members of Kiro Games. His first name is Mediba, so this reference isn't as weird as it seems. The story deals in xenophobia, tribalism, human trafficking, and doesn't just let sentimentality take the wheel. Sure, as mentioned, it may have its sillier moments, but they don't really go sentimental. They struggle forth and maybe, maybe hope, but that hope is hard won. At worst, and this is maybe a bit harsh, some of the heavy themes they talk about they deal with in a heavy-handed way sometimes, or at the very least it's very simple to pretty much on-site know what real world phenomena it's mirroring. And sometimes it can be a bit difficult to connect. I believe originally the game was made in French and the English localization is a touch unrefined. Do you mean company? I guess when you compare it to the sheer amount of text these errors aren't that common, but they do add to the problem because sometimes things feel a bit stilted in general. But please don't let that dissuade you. Arguably this game's story is its strongest part and is enough to recommend. With developers even and release comic books on occasion in the game's news feed and Steam. And according to the writer, a great deal of other players refer to it as a story-based game too. Also a fun fact, Enzo's actual name is Inquo. I'd argue that's lateral movement. You don't trust us to say Inquo, but words like Okungudamu, they can handle it. Also, I get the feeling that there are some features that the developers originally planned to add, but couldn't get around to. For instance, you can go to optional islands and towns, but they don't offer anything as far as I can see. No side quests or Final Fantasy epic boss. But this keeps the games felt. I mean, if you want to compare this game to a JRPG, it is quite short. And while you can grind, it's not really necessary, which is something a lot of people will appreciate. A JRPG for people with less time in their hands. At 27 hours. A good length for what this tale is. I didn't get tired of it, and the game is cheap on Steam. 159 Rand full price, 47 Rand 70 on sale. That's 1 Rand 77 per hour of gameplay, which is quite good. 
explained it, but to download it isn't the easiest as it takes up 13.08 gigabytes on the hard drive. And it sort of works on the Warhorse, varying it like between 39 and 44 frames per second standing still, 46 to 52 FPS in a less stimulating area, but it can go down to as broad a sweep as between 29 and 43 frames per second during talking. And it can be very jolty in between smooth bits, with the FPS going as low as the teens during the jolts. Jolts when you activate a legacy or say use a power. This may be one of the few situations where something plays on the warhorse, but those jolts just make it kind of unplayable. But it is promising that it's so close. It's just a bit surprising, I thought this would work. So here are the system requirements, you make the call. And stereotypically it's mostly kid friendly, I mean you rarely see blood, but it does deal in some grim topics. At one point you and Irene get very low, maybe some kids can handle it? I mean there's no swearing or anything like that. At worst it has this surprisingly dirty joke. Some people may not like how they dealt with these grim topics in an almost relativistic way. The game has great unique design and drawn characters that don't feel out of place, in spite of the fact that they're quite weird, African inspired architecture, has a nice asymmetrical quality, nice backgrounds. Sure it can feel a bit grating and unpleasant. On the rare occasions when they don't play with the light and soften things, during far away shots it can look a bit grainy in terms of the outlines of the characters. And the animations, particularly in the cutscenes, can be quite rigid. But they're nice and shonen. The powers look nice, but at the same time sometimes they look like they're overlain. Ultimately, I think it's very good. The music is quite good, quite unique. Seemingly a more traditional orchestral approach, combined with stereotypically African instrumentation. Love percussion, mouth noise on occasion. Honestly, it was rare to hear anything that sounded too familiar. And only that, it's lovely. Actiony and somber, to jaunty and fun. The only ways in which the music steps wrong is in that the silliness track is too silly, arguably. And the combat track, while good, it's short and it loops. And in its abruptness, you will probably notice. Good, simple, methodical combat. It's fun, but arguably repetitive. But for the length of the game, I didn't find that bothersome. Especially since it gives you different legacy combinations to grind through. Even though there are reskins, to an extent, that's a nice bit of spice. And you don't really have to grind, you do this on the way to the objective. A lot of people will appreciate that. Sure, getting stunned and damage cascades are common enough, but it's loose in a fun way. You jump really high, can easily keep enemies in the air by attacking them. When enemies bunch up together, you can hit multiple enemies at once and keep them there during the stun lock. The non-legacy RPG elements rarely entered my mind, though, for instance, I didn't tamper with Irene's complicity until like halfway through the game, I believe, and I don't think I did it much after this occasion either. Transactional. The game also has mild platforming and puzzles for a bit of a change of pace. Nothing that's too big a draw here. Maybe some exploration that's nice. And I can remember one choice driven quest. That in all fairness was one of the harder moral choices I ever had to make in a game. So fair play. The game has great world building about Orionics, legacies and politics. The story is maturely written and critical. If the pace is quite brisk, it's non-sentimental in a lovely way, but the gags are perhaps a bit stilted. For instance, maybe they hit the happy wife, happy life stuff a bit too hard, but some gags can land? And they may go a bit heavy handed with some of the points they make? But all in all, the story is great. It's the game standout feature, but on the con side, that feature is undercut at least a little bit in the English translation, and the maybe what feels like unfinished content. Plus, I'll mention it quickly, it does have the odd glitch. For instance, this laggy cutscene, this one cutscene only, I did load and initialize it again, plus I can at the very least remember one occasion where the game did crash. But I can't remember these being prevalent enough for me to truly gripe about it. Sure, it is a bit rough, and I wouldn't blame you if you thought the combat was a bit of a strange gaming exercise, but I definitely believe this game's worth a go. Come on, play it. Maybe just realize that like me, you also didn't know the actual meaning of this word. Choip, 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 choip.